Coming up on today's COVID Daily, we talk about medical situations uh, with the stats guy, but also we are covering AFL, NFL, Women's World Cup. I've got MLB. Alex, what are you talking about? I'm not leaving this room because the HR department's outside right now. <laughs> Check's out. Uh, Liam? I don't really want to be a part of the show anymore, but <laughs> uh, if I win a sandwich for Japan, I'll be happy. Uh, that's what we're talking. Player Whoa! props, game picks, best bets. We're going to rate my multi in there. It's a chockers show. You better check it out right now. Welcome to Code Bear Daily. It is Wednesday, August 9, hump day. Episode 170 of Code Bear Daily, this here program. It is a pretty good one. I'm your host, James Clements. I'm the editor of a very good website. It's called CodeBet. You can find that at codebet.com.au for all your stats, breakdowns, betting analyses, odds comparisons, all the good stuff. I'm joined, as always, by the pontiffs. That's right, the pontiffs of punting. Now that first time round, didn't even have to pause. We've got Alex Donnelly over there with his uh, kitty fiddler mustache. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, at least I don't have herpes like stats guy. Whoa. Sure. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, that might be a HR violation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but either way. We've just discovered Stats Guy's been sharing a water bottle with someone because he doesn't no, know No, I don't think it was is. anyone's, but anyway, we'll see. Cool story, Stats Guy. That's the Stats Guy. He's uh, got double herpes now. <laughs> I'm still alive, so that's good. Yeah. Didn't know you could get rid of it. Is it really living? <laughs> Are you? That's, that's um, yeah, right. yeah, Thankfully, yeah. Chemist Warehouse is around the corner. I'm sure you can get something for that. <laughs> I don't know how we started the show like this. Well, welcome to Code <laughs> Herp Daily. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, Code Bet Daily, that's it. It is what it says on the tin. Codes, betting, and daily. Can't we wait are for the covering. To listen to this one. And we're covering a mess of stuff today, actually. We've got uh, player props, game picks, best bets, all the good stuff. Uh, I don't have a rate my multi unless one of you gentlemen does. Alex there we does. Go. Yeah, yeah, got yeah. An Alex one. Fantastic. Uh, I'm going to be talking about a bit of AFL, NFL, Women's World Cup, and I'm going to throw in an MLB game for tomorrow as well, which I really like. What about you there, stats guy? Bit of FIFA Women's World Cup. We've got some quarterfinals starting on Friday morning. And then EPL yeah. Future. I know we talked about a lot of EPL Futures in the podcast yesterday, but just an update you on You mean that hour long EPL Futures podcast yeah, you did pretty yesterday? Much, yeah. Our yeah. season well, preview. That, that's what Alex is doing. Hash, show hashtag Redux. <laughs> no, <laughs> just to rehash on something that happened uh, overnight. Uh, work smarter, not harder, he <laughs> says. Uh, we've got Alex over there as well. What do you say? All EPL. Yeah, Literally Alex, all EPL. At least I'm doing but something it's stuff I didn't talk about yesterday. I'm glad so. I'm the only one who rocked up today, like vaguely prepared to do <laughs> some, you know, actual betting talk. But that's fine. I got Whatever. some World Cup stuff. All right, let's get into some player props then. <laughs> it's time for player props. It is time for player props. <laughs> AFL. This is a fascinating one. Geelong Collingwood Friday. It's a huge game. Alex is going to be there. Yep. I think Stats Guy is going to be there. Sold out. Well. I am, yeah. Wow. Where are Very, you sitting? Uh, away from you. Yeah, that was going to be like, <laughs> so I was going to be like, where are you? Not there. MCC somewhere. Yeah, I'm in the MCC oh, too. No. You guys can share a footing. I'm on level uh, one. Please tell me you're on level three. I don't know where I'm sitting, to be honest. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. I'm there somewhere. You're up. The Good top chat. This is just, don't, just don't share any tins. All right. Uh, Jordan <laughs> Degoe against Geelong on Friday. This is the big one. Yeah. Uh, obviously, Dacos the Younger is out with a bung fractured right kneecap-ish kind of thing. Or it's like a it's like a weird sort of bone in his kneecap, I believe, or in his knee at some point. Either it's way, broken. I'm no medical doctor. Uh, just <laughs> or ask any that doctor. guy. <laughs> or any Either way. <laughs> You don't have to know that I don't have any sort of medical degree. And you're no math magician either. I'm no math magician. <laughs> but Jordan Degoe, mathematically, always shows up against the Cats. Love this. Without Dacos, who do you reckon actually steps up in this game, gentlemen? I think Leo was talking about it, but I agreed with him with Jack Crisp. Jack Crisp like is one him, of my yeah. picks for this, Jack 25 Crisp plus. Has been average. He's getting a lot of touches. Not, maybe not yeah, exactly. it's great. If yeah. he's getting a lot of touches, That's good if for he's betting. doing nothing with them. Yeah. 22 disposals. We're not so betting on him to do anything with them. I'm going to say to go, he kicks it up a little bit of a notch. He got absolutely uh, pantsed, is the phrase I would use on NBA yes. Australia, by Jack Scrimshaw on the weekend. Mm. He's like, oh, I'm bigger than everybody. Check. Oh, oh no. Oh, <laughs> Flattened. I just got pantsed. Uh, figuratively. Not literally. Uh, this isn't Jordan Ngoi's Bali uh, vlog, is it? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> uh, 25 plus disposals and two goals for Jordan Ngoi. He had 25 and three against the Cats in round one. He had 26 and two in last year's qualifying. Mm. Finally, doesn't yeah, God, mind going good. against the Cats. The Cats have got a lot of their own injury woes, of course. Uh, but for 25 plus and two plus goals in this game, $7.43. $7.43. Call me Jordan to gonna put some money on that one. I'm just saying. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, I can't wait for this, but that's probably my favorite out of that entire game, uh, which the preview of this, of which will be up later today. So it should be there right now. Cool. And I'm going to keep bang on this, but um, my NFL pick for Juzzy Herbs, Justin Herbert. So we're heading into our fantasy football season, of course, as well for our NFL. 
And the more I've looked at it, and the more I've looked at mock drafts, the more I've looked at uh, what, what QBs I'm going to just be absolutely focused on heading into this season, Jazzy Herbs is just completely catapulted up my rankings. Mm. To the point where I'm like, passing leader, I've talked about this before, $7.50 for him. Love it. Absolutely love it. They've got Callan Moore. I talked about this uh, last week when they brought him in as the offensive coordinator. Yep. This was, there's a couple of like key little factors in this as well. Last year, Jazzy Herbs was 31st in terms of average yards per throw or attempt, I think, it was something like that. Uh, 31st. Jazzy Herbs has got a bazooka for a right arm. Might as well and use it, yeah. Fire it off. Let's go. <laughs> Callan Moore was in charge of Dak Prescott over there in Dallas. He was 11th in terms of average uh, pass attempts. So, 31st versus 11th. Which one's better? 11. Yeah, there you go. I'm pretty sure. 11. Callum Moore's now Jazzy Herbs' coach. Expect him to go a little bit more vertical this year. So that passing leader, I think, is absolutely one of, going to be one of my locks of the uh, preseason. I think he's going to go past Mahomes, whose wide receiving corps has made up a bunch of no-names at the moment. Patrick Mahomes, Patrick Mahomes doesn't really need too many names to like absolutely dominate anyway. Yep. But Justin Herbert will be your passing leader for the NFL this season. And if you think that's a half-decent idea, how about NFL MVP then for Jazzy Herbs and these Los Angeles Chargers? 12 bucks for Justin Herbert. If he can absolutely Pretty launch good. it, he's in his fourth year, going into his fourth year. He actually has already set the record for most yards in the first three seasons of anyone Oof. ever in the really? NFL. Really? Justin Herbert's Jeez, a lot. That's, that's pretty oh, good. It's not a bad record. Yeah. So MVP fourth year, if the Chargers can actually just avoid the injury bug like they've never been able to, uh, they could be absolutely unreal this year. They could also just get two injuries and fall into a complete heap. <laughs> but <laughs> if they let's, go, uh, let's go on the positive. So 12 yeah. bucks for uh, Jazzy, Just, Jazzy Herbs, a.k.a. Justin Herbert, to be your NFL MVP. It's going to be my uh, preseason pick, I think. I'm leaning that way. I've still got a couple of weeks. But that's where I'm at. Awesome. Alex. Having a look at uh, Ollie Watkins for Aston Villa. He's there. <laughs> Too striker. many Ollies. Too many yep. Ollies. But I love my Ollie Watkins because he's playing for my beloved Aston Villa. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> we will get player. Jim in a kit before the start of the season at some <laughs> stage. Uh, look, he comes into this after scoring 15 goals last year in the EPL. But what was really interesting was 13 of those came after Christmas. Yeah. So that was after that stinkiness of Stephen Jeez, Gerrard. What a sad to put in his sack. <laughs> yeah. Dolls. Peptides. No. Oh, right. <laughs> Dolls. <Go on. laughs> they gave him an awesome Spanish manager, Unai Emery, as well. Yeah. Stevie Genus had rubbed off by then. It's like, hey, you're kind of good. I'm actually going to let you score some goals because that's sort of what Villa hadn't been doing. <laughs> I think it was 20 straight games they scored goals in when Emery took over. Yep. As I said, 13 came after Christmas last year. Another se- another preseason with Emery. So they've, they've actually built again this year. Aston Villa, I'll talk about them later again. He's $1.50 to score his 15 goals once again. He's $4.50 to score 20 or more. Ooh, Given yeah. the fact that 13 of his goals came after, after Christmas, Christmas. Surely you can get a few before Christmas. Yeah, I think yeah. he could get, you know, yeah. seven or eight of them before. Yeah. Half that before Christmas. But yeah, yeah. And then we're there. So yeah, $4.50 for 20 or more. I think I'm going to really sniff like that at one. that I think one. I might have to have a bit of a ride on that as well. Yeah. Nice. Let's go. Because I'm all aboard my Takes uh, penalties Aspen as well. Train. Yeah, he a lot does, of good yeah. dribblers this year as well. And so. then he did have a spate of about four or five games late in the year. He didn't score, and then he scored in the last two as well. So it's like if you can start being a bit more consistent, and I think Villa are going to be a better team this year, yeah, that 20 is just going to get smashed. <laughs> yeah, yeah we are. <laughs> sure. <laughs> We're unstoppable. <laughs> Europa still, League. Still going to finish like yeah. seventh. Let's go. Yeah. Europa League. Shut up, Statsko. <laughs> yeah. All right. Statsko. Are, are your team in the Europa League, Statsko? <laughs> nah, we just wanted yeah. to give everyone Sorry, a chance. Sorry, I can't hear anything from 11th place Chelsea over there. Oh, it's 12th. Uh, but, uh, 12. <laughs> All right, Statsko, what have you got? For your enough of this, this uh, Chelsea slander. I mean, another start one. winning games and uh, then we'll stop. I'm not it. covering crap from Aston Villa. Anyway, uh, the FIFA Women's World I Cup, Spain taking on Netherlands in the first quarter final. We're going to be doing a live stream for that uh, game, I'm pretty sure. Good advertisement. 11 a.m. Yep. 11, 11 a.m. on Friday. Shout out to FIFA for screwing the pooch there on the scheduling because they thought America would be. Here. Yeah, but they didn't suck it. The thing is, they didn't really screw the pooch. They were very clearly leaning into the ideal situation, which is exactly what they should do. Yet the ideal situation for the rest of the world was America stuffing it at the first. My favorite thing is Australian media going, the ideal situation is finding out what's best for me. <laughs> yeah. How is this not completely catered to what I want right <laughs> That's now? That's why it's got a world cup. Like the yeah. Australian media with the Women's World Cup is basically. Just picture a four-year-old just banging their head against the wall, <laughs> against the wall, just time and time yeah. again. That's what Australia media do. Why is this thing not on this time? It's like because they've situ like they've, it's a they've world done this out, cup, yeah. and it's not about you. I think done a pretty Channel Nine representative 
Matt, Matt bring the booger in! Hey, 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 Gerald! It had to happen. First time Gerald's like, whop, whop. Oh, that's the first time we've had that. Beeps, I like it. NBA Australia creeping in, I like it. I don't mind this. This is what happens when I'm not on a show for two days. It's on. Let's go. But also, shout out to some of the dorks in the Australian media going, ah, we don't know enough about the Tillies. We haven't heard from them. You had six months before the tournament, you nuffies. Yep. Yeah, absolute morons everywhere. <laughs> morons as far as the eye can see. All right, continue, Stats. I was going to have a bet, yeah. Ah. Um, a favourite of the podcast, Alex and I have got on her a few times, Jill Rod. Uh, she's been absolutely awesome. She's second in the Golden Boot with four goals across the four games, and she scored in five of her last seven games for the Orange Lionesses for the Netherlands. Uh, she's a, a midfielder, but she's been playing in the boxes just as Again, much as a striker. Again, I hate just Orange Lionesses. Like, what's Jordy Lionesses, called? yeah, I know. What's that English team called, E? <laughs> there is three lionesses. Like, okay. I think orange. Den- orange lionesses. Orange. I think will be Denmark orange. are also like the red lionesses as well. The red yeah, there's lion. a few lionesses. There is, a, there is a lot of terrible names yeah. and Carve they fall out. under that. Yeah. Carve out a unique nickname. That's all we are. Yeah. I think because, yeah, the, the men's team is just the lions, I think. So I don't know. Why again, yeah. what are they doing? Yeah. Anyway. How many lions do you assert? Well, again, with England, <laughs> not many, but again, the Dutch. Just saying. I yeah. don't think I saw a lion when I was in the Netherlands. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you I mean. Have... Uh, sorry, two AM. I did. <laughs> but in a the real line. one? No, <laughs> no. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Oh, you'd be worried if you saw a real one. Anyway, Jill Rod. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's enough of Alex's sex stuff. <laughs> yeah. All right. Cool. Jill Rod. She's been awesome. She's better. had eighteen shots in this tournament alone. She's pretty much been playing like a striker from that midfield position. There's eleven players on the in the odds shorter than her to score in this match. What is going which on? Which I've got no idea why. That's why you get five. Fire up stats, guy. I've got no idea. I think because Spain are the fa- pretty heavy favourites. So five dollar yeah. odds for Jill Rod, who's scored in the last three games. Get on her to score. That's amazing odds for someone that's been two dollars fifty most of the other matches. So, nice one. Yeah. All right, good job, Jill Rod. All we go. What's your best match or game pick? Jumping the gun on the uh, match game picks, but that checks out. Let's do it. Match and game picks Friday, the Women's World Cup. So stats guy just hit on this. Spain v. Netherlands. 11 a.m. We'll be covering that. Netherlands and over two and a half. It's seven dollars fifty. Yeah. Whew. I like the Dutch to win this. I don't know. Spain have looked good at times. The Netherlands just feel that little bit more solid. They've been more consistent. And I feel yeah. like this again, this just screams two one win. For the Netherlands. I mean, I want to see it go to penalties so we can lose our minds on the live stream. Sure. That'll be cool. That also yeah. checks out. But I would also just like a good game. But Netherlands and over two and a half, that's where I'm going to be leaning for this. $7.50. Pack her up, boys. We're done. Yeah. And then Japan <laughs> versus Svidan. Yeah. Hello. Uh, Svidan and under two and a half. I'm going against the stats Sweet. guy. Oh, going against you too. Can, the we stats get a, guy, can we get a boo, please? The stats guy yeah. loves his <laughs> Japan. <laughs> so late. That was just... <laughs> yeah. Pause. Uh, <laughs> Sweden and under two and a half is five dollars fifty. This feels I'm like going... a sandwich bet. Sweden and Japan. Actually, I forgot about my sandwich bet from the other night with you. We actually didn't agree to a sandwich bet because oh. it's a three-way bet. Yeah. Okay, yeah, sure. yeah. But you two, sweet, you're you're all over Japan and you're tipping against them. That is a sandwich bet. I just feel like so. What was it? It was the second game that Japan didn't really put the hammer down on a team. I feel like. uh, uh, we're Sweden. Obviously, we saw them come up trumps against the USA. Uh, I feel two like nil, but the, two nil, right? The other guys are four and five nil. Yeah, true. I think Sweden will be big ask of Japan, so I feel like Sweden can eke this one out. I feel like it'll be a one nil, two nil kind of dr- uh, game. So I'm going to take Sweden under two and a half. That's a sandwich bet. Five fifty, hundred percent. I feel like we're feeling sandwiches. Yeah, yeah. Well, because you're on Japan, so yeah, and the over. I think so. <laughs> this is uh, <laughs> we're not going to go the double sandwich, but this is no. a sandwich bet. Yeah. Right, I'll give you one uh, good. A uh, stat from Sweden. They did beat them 3-0 when they met last time, but Japan have come a long way since then. There you go. Uh, cool. Also, that MLB pick that I had, the Twins play the Tigers again tomorrow. They had won five straight until they lost today. <laughs> oh, wow. They will I lost. like it how you keep tipping teams to win they'll, and then they, they lose they, six straight. They listen to the podcast and yeah. go, yeah, we're not going to win. Tough one. Yeah. <laughs> the Yale Angels, Angels uh, playoff bet is uh, not going great. It's <laughs> right. only lost six in a, on the drop. Uh, That's the, twi- right. the Twins minus one and a half over the Tigers. The Tigers stink. And the pitching matchup is wildly in favor of the Twins tomorrow. And it's $2. The minus one and a half is two bucks. Mm. This is great. I love this because the Twins have also, when they've won, they've covered the one and a half run line in four of the last five wins. So basically when they win, and this has been a fairly big trend as well, when they win, they win big. So the Tigers stink it up. I'm going to go the Twins, minus one and a half, $2 over the Detroit Tigers tomorrow morning. It's an early one too. So yeah. keep, a, keep a track of that. All right, Alex. Well, we're going to do this then. Break my multi. Said it better myself. <laughs> exactly. Uh, four <laughs> games this weekend in the EPL to kick off the season. First game of the season, Manchester City travel to Turf Moor to take on Burnley. City in over two and a half goals. 
City have won at the last 11 between the two, 40 to 1. 40 to 1. As an That's aggregate, crazy. 40 As an to aggregate. 1 yeah. is ridiculous. <laughs> in 11 games. So, yeah, we think we hit that over. Arsenal over 2.5 against Nottingham Forest. That's uh, Saturday night at the Emirates Stadium. I think Arsenal score a couple of goals, but as typical Arsenal, Might they will one, yeah. Yeah, concede one and yeah. sure, it'll be like 3-1. Brighton over 2.5 versus Luton Town. We have talked about Luton Town in yesterday's uh, EPL preview. We think they're going to struggle. Brighton, they're a lot of fun to watch. Matoma just going to do some dribble madness and hopefully cross to Ferguson because we We're might Ferguson be on Ferguson to score a few goals yes, this year. Yes. And then Man United over two and a half versus Wolves. It's the final game of match week one. Wolves sacked their manager That's overnight, I'm talk about literally later. eight hours after I said, oh, you know what? Wolves will be the first team to sack their manager. <laughs> It happened eight hours later. It happened so quickly you didn't get to bet on it. I know. No, that was, I don't even think we could, yeah. It happened so fast, Leo couldn't even clip it up for socials this morning. <laughs> it's like, Alex thinks this will happen. It happened overnight, dude. <laughs> that is amazing. Uh, anyway, that rate by multi is $11.05. I'm going for goals in the first week. That's four Ooh. overs. I like that. Uh, do we actually know like if there's a trend in uh, week one, in match, match uh, week ones? Yes, yeah, City, and, uh, five over the last six have gone under. <laughs> Or love for under, really? Yeah. But they probably but they played Burnley, some harder teams. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, I'm going to give it an eight and a half because I think, or maybe I'm nine. I want to because... dig into like what the first week over under situation is yeah. because of the 10 games. Yep. I'd be fascinated to see. Well, that's what... why I didn't go into I looked at a few others and I'm like, oh, nope, nope, no. Well, thank if these you. are the four most likely to go over, I'll give that a nine because yep. it feels like Brighton are going to kill Luton, and Arsenal are going to smash nice. Well, it's, I'm, I'm trying to pick the winner and the over yeah. rather than just the over because, like, Newcastle take on Villa, and I'm like, oh, this could be six goals or it could be none. Yep. Brighton is the I only like one. That. They I like that a lot. 11 bucks, oh, five. Yep. I'm here for that. What did yep. I say? Nine. No, I think I gave a nine as well. That's, a, that's the highest rating that in a while. Very good rate, my multi. All right, the second half of the sandwich bet stats guy. Yes, Japan versus Sweden, uh, Friday night for the quarterfinals of the uh, Women's World Cup. Uh, Japan have won all their games, have surprised many with the most goals in the tournament. Didn't surprise me. Uh, they smashed Spain 4-0, uh, which has been awesome. Sweden, also unbeaten. They've won all those their games. They held strong in penalties against the US. They were very lucky to win that game. I know the US Held were, strong or... Penalties got sprayed. Penalties did get, penalties did get sprayed from Rapino. Uh, she's copping a lot of flack on online at the moment. Uh, but yeah, I don't think they're the better team here. Uh, Japan have been amazing. They've won seven of their last eight games and won four of their last five matches against top ten ranked sides. So Japan, I think, are eleventh ranked. Can't remember what Sweden are, but they're like a higher third. third. Yeah, so they're a higher ranked side. Obviously, I think Japan will wipe the floor with them. I don't really? know if it, I think it will be close. Uh, the quality attacks for both teams. I like, uh, this sounds like a sandwich bet between us as well. <laughs> <laughs> I might go into sandwich you, debt. You already you owe me. A, <laughs> you still owe me a sandwich. Yeah, I can buy two sandwich sandwiches debt. once, or I can just you know, negate segment? my sandwich That's debt. Instead of best bet sandwich debt. Not done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But yeah, Japan's pace of oh, attack. Sweden, don't foul me now. <laughs> <laughs> I can't afford two sandwiches. <laughs> They'll say, we go to Ikea okay. for hot dogs. Two kids to Just feed. bet on Japan to cover the, cover the price of the sandwich. Yeah, have 20 <laughs> bucks on Japan. So then you win a sandwich either I way. I like this Hedgeman sandwich bet <laughs> with actual money. <laughs> I'm, think, I'm thinking this yeah, through. That, yeah, wait, is this, so is this to qualify? Are we going 90 minutes? No, I'm going 90 minutes. No, I'm going qualifying. Uh, yeah. I'm going 90 minutes. I think Japan's pace and attack will uh, take over here. So if it's a draw, you two both owe me a sandwich. Yeah, but <laughs> uh, no, that's not happening. <laughs> Damn it. But yeah, they love to attack. They just have a big wave of players going to attack, uh, which creates really open matches. So I don't mind the over one and a half goal market. And this one, it's a bit more conservative, but you get a bit of value there. The seven of the last eight Japan matches have gone over that one and a half goals. So Japan and over one and a half goals is $3.20, which I thought was great value. Uh, for two quality sides. And then just Japan head-to-head, -head, I'm surprised you get $2.25. I know Sweden have looked yeah, pretty good themselves, but just Japan's attack looks unstoppable. So I'm going Japan, who's been my favourite team other than Matildas, yeah. <sighs> Breaking my heart here, Scott's guy, <laughs> but that's fine. Okay. I, can't, I have to keep backing them. They've been awesome for me, mm. so. Nice one. All right, let's get into it. It's best bets, it's best bets, it's time for all the best bets. Just wait till I do my so song and dance dinner show. <laughs> With a cane and a top hat. Down a crown. <laughs> yeah, tell you what, I can't wait to play the bad beat bit. <laughs> nice. All right. I've got a very simple and easy best bet for today, tomorrow, whenever. It's not another one of my favorite NFL futures. This is another win total. Uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you might remember them from winning the Super Bowl a yeah, couple of years ago. Yeah, Tom Brady. Uh, Tom Brady is no longer their quarterback, <laughs> however. Talk about a downgrade. They're going to Baker Mayfield, a.k.a. an insurance spokesman. Uh, <laughs> because what? in the States, Baker Mayfield was the number one pick in what, 16 or whatever it was, and then proceeded to have a commercial for seemingly everything. Every oh, really? And it's like Baker Mayfield never actually did squat in terms of doing stuff on the field. But you get a lot of money. 
He would have got he a, lot did get paid a lot of money. Yeah. Good for him. <laughs> but uh, he also did take the Browns to their first ever playoff game. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, well, yeah. first playoff game in a million years. Uh, pretty gnarly, but then has just been stinking it up since because the Browns went, hang on a second, we'll get the rub and tug kid, a.k.a. Deshaun Watson in there. And Gerald's just like, I'm going to punch James in the face. <laughs> just <laughs> dropping, uh, dropping bombs all everywhere. Oh, you didn't tweet that time. But Baker Mayfield uh, got kicked to the curb because he's not very good. He's now the quarterback in Tampa Bay. That's rare. Yeah. Uh, not obviously Tom Brady. Tom Brady. They <laughs> do have. They still have Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, and uh, Russell Gage as their starting wide receivers. They've got Rashad White as their running back. The rest of this team, however, stinks. This is what happens. You uh, sell the farm to get the Super Bowl. Yep. You load it happen- up. It happens, yeah. You load up, you load up, you load up, you sell her a cap, and then you get stuck in salary cap detention, basically, for the next couple of years. <laughs> They're seeing it again with the Rams. They won the Super Bowl two years ago. Absolutely cooked last year. Cooked again this year. I'll actually talk about them probably in the next couple of days. But defensively as well for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This is the big problem for me, right? Not only do you have uh, Baker Mayfield who's going to give the team, the other team the ball just as often as he's going to give your team, but they have Shaq Barrett and Vita Vea and not a giant amount else on that defense. They've even got dudes asking out and actually asking for uh, – Trades like Devin White, I think, is now just like, ah, this sucks. I'm out of here. Can I please have a trade? And everyone's like, it's not how this works in the NFL, but it actually eventually is going to happen. Is it going to happen? Yeah, yeah okay. We saw it last year with Raekwon Smith in Baltimore. Great but either game. way, uh, under six and a half for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They've got the 17th toughest strength of schedule. It basically lands at about six wins is probably where I'd get it to. Yep. The just under, under, yeah. Six and a half. We're nice. going under. That's $1.70, so... You could probably even, uh, if you really don't have much faith, then you could probably dump dump it down to five and a half and really boost up those odds. But at the moment, we don't have any alternate win totals. Okay. That's quite frustrating. That's so six and a half will do nine. right now, Yep, and I'll take that. All right, Alex. Uh, looking at EPL once again, uh, team to finish higher and a top six finish overall. So your beloved Villa once again. <laughs> of course we're going like, to. We've been talking about it a lot. We're going to top four now. Yeah. I don't top want to. Four. We're going Champions League. Yeah. <laughs> so we did talk yesterday in the EPL show that they've made some great signings in the off season and also Yeah, I just put in I just sent a couple of emails. Yeah, so just add, but adding <laughs> Sign in, this guy. But I also think the addition of having actually a full preseason under Unai Emery will be yeah, help more him, beneficial yeah. for them in the long run. Yeah. Uh, given that he came in midway through the season, he's like, I'm just gonna try and fix this joint. And he did. Uh, adding in Diaby, Torres, and Tillemans, all three absolute fantastic players could walk into any starting 11 yep. apart from probably City and Liverpool I'd say you've also got Martinez in goal he's a psychopath and somehow he's actually staying all the talk was he's, he's so going to leave because yeah. he's a He's a dick. Well, he's one uh, of the best players in the world. Yeah. yeah as well. uh, Ollie Watkins is up front, of course, and Douglas Louise just prowling in midfield. This is a really good team. So they're 2 bucks 30 to finish higher than Brighton. Ooh. Yep, that was my favorite bet yesterday. They're yeah. two seventy five to finish higher than Tottenham. Oh, I love that. Oh, I don't know they're about that sixty one to finish Ange. higher than West Ham. Hey. I just don't. West Ham, are, yeah, crap. West Ham, are, funnily enough, we yelled about them yesterday not signing anyone. They're literally about to sign four players they're, in the next three the days. The Premier League teams have been listening to our podcast. Yeah, so. seriously. Stop making us look stupid. Make <laughs> us look smart. No, they are making us look smart because they went, wait, we haven't signed anybody. We <laughs> yeah. just heard Kobe. We better jump on and sign some yeah. folks. <laughs> and then for Jim... The top six finish at three dollars seventy five. Come on, Villa! <laughs> <laughs> I, I really rate that because I think the top the top four or five teams is going to be Arsenal, Man City, Man United, Newcastle, Liverpool. That sixth spot is up for grabs. <coughs> Chelsea, <clears throat> you have no midfield. They at least have. Oh, a, I was coughing. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, they at least have a, a structured squad. You're still trying to figure out yeah. who's actually on your team. Yeah, it'll take a bit of time. Your main striker that you just spent another hundred million on is out for four months. Let's try to make it fair. Not at all well. ideal. Uh, so yeah, I think Aston Villa top six finish three seventy five is a ripping to make bet. It fair, that yeah. was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're just, nah, we're gonna be crap to start the season, but we'll uh, be. Oh boy. Yep. Sorry, keep going. That's it. <laughs> oh, that's it. Nice. Top six. Top six finish three dollars seventy five. Yep. Uh, finish higher than Brighton, two thirty. Tottenham, yeah, like two seventy five, yeah, and West Ham a buck sixty one. Honestly, I don't get why West Ham is so rated. They literally lost their two best players, and they haven't bought in anyone yet. But they may in the next like day. Yeah. All right, stats guy. As Alex uh, mentioned before, I'm looking at another EPL future. Wolverhampton to be relegated. Uh, Alex just mentioned we, or he predicted on the show that Julian Loptegi uh, was going to be sacked early in the season. Alex Donnelly well, is the, the oracle. <laughs> 
<laughs> the season hasn't even started. Three days before the season, uh, they've they've sacked their manager, which is unbelievable. I really is this where I tell you that I'm the new Wolves manager? <laughs> I mean, I'm still waiting for my email you, you to confirm Bill that I'm still... the new English manager. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm basically standing there watching Wolves coaching and wearing my Aston Villa full kit. So <laughs> that's going to roll. It's like a real Ted Lasso move type right there. Uh, yeah, I think it's really risky just to sack your manager three days just before chop the up season. A beard and just leave the mustache. They're going to have to. Hey, <laughs> it's my job. Whoa. Only one person can have a mustache. Uh, yeah, Wolves had the least goals in the season la- uh, in the league last season, which was yeah, they were absolutely horrible. Uh, their leading goal scorer Ruben Neves went to the Saudi league, which I still. So they scored the least amount of goals last season, and they lost their leading goal scorer. They lost, they lost their, they, but their leading goal scorer only scored six goals. So they got a bunch yeah. of money because they're under financial fair play yes. uh, issues as From well. Saudi, given, ev- given the fact that they spent up to win the championship, and then you know Saudi's like, hi, we have some money. Yeah, take it. Yeah. Sure. Uh, so I don't trust them at all. Ruben Neves is a quality player for. Like the past like four years for them so no manager at the moment no stars in this side at all they can't be trusted I think they're going to continue to drop in odds they dropped about 25 cents overnight I think they're going to drop for relegation even more so Wolves to be relegated at 325 I think yeah really good bet at the moment nice one can't trust mm. them that's your best bet this guy yeah it's a long term nice. actually in fantasy it's a very long actually like that for 325 yeah, yeah I think gonna they're going to be better, closer right? to because like Nots is well Nots is if Man United and... come out and just go bang 5-0 on Saturday, on Saturday yeah, Sunday that'll drop like, to like 2 bucks. yeah yeah I don't mind that. All right, that's it. Cobed Daily done for today. We'll be back on deck tomorrow with a massive AFL daily show with every single game covered. The NRL show will be up by then as well. Possibly, maybe, perhaps. We'll see how we go. No pressure. But either way, <laughs> plenty going on. That's right. The AFL, the NRL shows, the EPL show will be back, presumably. Uh, we're going to do that Friday after, Friday after the live stream, I think. There you go. Friday. Massive EPL show for round one. Cool. Uh, but either way, get around all the shows. Subscribe across all of your podcast apps because uh, I think the EPL, AFL, and NRL show have their own streams. Yep. Places like Spotify, etc. The rest of it will just dump into your code bit daily feed. Uh, so get around code bit across all the socials as well, of course. Facey, IG, X, Threads, TikTok, Twitch. The cheat sheet still isn't back up. We had a cheat sheet yesterday. YouTube. Uh, YouTube. YouTube. That's a good call. I think you said all of them. All the YouTube stuff's really great. You can see our smiley faces. <laughs> and uh, that's it, I think. You send in any questions, any multis for some ratings. Stats guy will definitely not give them herps. And, uh, I don't know how go. this has started. <laughs> Love this. You sucked on someone else's water bottle. No, what happens. It was a new one, I think. It's, uh, it should be like one of those just, I don't know, public service and you wouldn't share a water bottle. <laughs> you wouldn't steal, wouldn't a, steal car. a car. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Alex. Yeah, cheers. Thanks, Stats Guy. Nice stuff for you guys. Thanks, <laughs> thanks as always to Gerald for producing <laughs> and Leo, the social guy. <laughs> boo. There you go. Yeah, boo. Uh, and thanks to me, just because, look, I'm getting fired off this Aston Villa season. I can't wait. Fired from the show as well. And uh, <laughs> luckily, I've got a purple hat because I wore my other hat today, which doesn't suit. Anyway. What do we say, Stats Guy? Gamble responsibly. And I don't have herpes, he says. (laughs) All right, may all your picks come in. Happy punting. We'll catch you tomorrow. Cobet Daily, out. What's gambling really costing you? For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.